Today, we celebrate three of our heritage Methodist plantings. Jesus said, where two are gathered in my name, there I am also. St. Paul Methodists are proof of that. These congregations have accomplished a lot beyond the walls of their buildings. From the early days of St. Paul as a head of navigation on the Mississippi, Methodists have followed its population growth and built service-oriented congregations from east to west and north to south. Transportation has been key to that development. In those early days, this was a walking city. People lived short distances from where they gathered to pray. The earliest Methodists were largely from Maine and New York, a mix of working class and socially prominent people. The Market Street Methodist Church was the first Protestant church in St. Paul, built in 1849, where the St. Paul Hotel now stands. That year, the entire St. Paul population was estimated to be 150. Membership in the church varied from 40 to 72. Methodists spread to other nearby neighborhoods as population growth sparked people to move, to open farms, build houses, engage in speculation, and so on. By the 1880s, the Four Corners at St. Anthony and Prior Avenue was the center of activities of Miriam Park, perhaps the most promising suburb of St. Paul. Transportation was still key, with short-line trains between the two cities the only means of reaching that section of the city, that is, unless one owned a horse and buggy and wished to take the time to make the five-mile drive. In 1883, the few Methodist people there had a rather perambulatory existence, holding services in various sites. In 1886, they finally organized Trinity Methodist Episcopal Church with just 16 members. When it was suggested, you should have a lady society, there were only 10 women in the church. But the women organized, and they held suppers to help pay off building and other expenses. Quickly, their women's foreign society was organized, followed by other civic-minded causes. Convenient transportation applied to yet another congregation on the northern outskirts of St. Paul. Hamlin University had closed its Red Wing Base School because of the Civil War. To reopen, the trustees wanted a new site which would allow students easy access to attend from anywhere. In 1880, they chose a site on the sparsely developed northern edge of St. Paul, away from distractions, yet convenient to a small train depot below the bluff. The keys here were similar to those in other areas, access to transportation, walkability, and convenience. The Hamlin Methodist Episcopal Church began in Old Main on the Hamlin campus, with faculty and community Methodists joining for worship. In 1900, the growing congregation opened its first separate building across the street. That building burned at Christmas in 1925, and another was built serving the broader community. For example, Hamlin Church was the site of the Minnesota Methodist Annual Conference for several years. Mary McNichol, the first woman pastor in Minnesota to receive full clergy rights, received them there in 1958. Hamlin Church continues to serve its congregation, neighborhood, and St. Paul with its outreach programs. We have opened our doors and our hearts to diverse populations caring for all people, regardless of socioeconomic status, race, and gender. These three congregations, East, West, and North, are only part of our story. We invite you to visit our map display downstairs in the lobby to see the story of all our heritage congregations. <laughs>